Hello, we're back with more coverage from CES 2020. I'm here with Douglas Alfaro, who is the general manager of Wallbox USA. It is very nice to meet you, and you are here with this fantastic product. Now, those of you who've watched us for a while know that I've been building my own home, or at least rebuilding my own home, and one of the things that we've been trying to do is make sure that we're using the least energy possible. We are on the grid, we are using grid power, but we do want to put solar panels on, we do want to try and make sure our energy usage is as low carbon as possible. And one way to do that is to use bi-directional charging and to use some load balancing to make sure we're using clean power. And this is the first unit that you can buy which would enable that. There are some kind of caveats to that, but we'll get into that in a bit. Douglas, great to see you here. It's your first year at CES. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we're super excited. Uh, yeah, I'm with Wallbox. We're a company out of Barcelona, Spain. We're headquartered there and our market leader in Europe for home charging systems, intelligent charging systems for EVs. What we've brought to CES is the first ever bi-directional charger for your home. This allows you not only to charge the car, but also to tap into the battery, use that energy for your daily household use and your, in your, uh, around the house using that energy or sending that energy back out onto the grid. And so this is designed to really optimize the way you're using energy in the home and gives you for the first time the opportunity to choose which energy you're using, whether it's from the grid, whether it's from your renewables, or whether it's from what you've stored in your car. So we touched on the fact in, uh, in some earlier videos that when there is sudden demand, grid suppliers are forced to turn on additional power stations. And that can mean quite often turning on gas turbines, things like that, which are much less clean than solar power. How does this product help reduce that? Yeah, that's a good question. So this technology was once available in a very large format. Something like a refrigerator was in pilot projects, typically associated with giant fleet depots and pilot projects. What we wanted to do was bring this product to scale. So what we've done is miniaturize that technology. We've shrunk it down into a unit that you could use in your home that you can easily install. And in the cases that you mentioned, a utility can send out a signal and utilize a little bit of battery from all of the systems that are available to take uh, off of load. Mm -hmm. They can do load shaving, peak shaving, frequency response, and even reserve power if needed to be, to be able to avoid surges, issues with the grid, demand side issues. And so this allows that dynamic relationship where the EV is not just a consumer, it can be a contributor to the grid. Yeah, because we often hear kind of arguments against EVs where they're saying, oh, everyone's going to plug in at exactly the yes, same time yes. and start charging simultaneously. And this, in fact, is kind of doing the opposite. You're giving back to the grid when it needs it. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's going to break through that barrier of, uh, or that uh, thought, thought, uh, mentalized barrier that when all EVs are here, what's going to happen with the grid? Well, actually, the grid can be more efficient because you can deviate where renewable energy goes. Maybe it doesn't need to go into the grid. Maybe it should be stored for local use, if that's the most efficient method. Maybe it should be redistributed amongst you and your neighbors. Maybe it should be sent out back into distribution so that these temporary plants don't have to be fired up, which typically use fossil fuels. So this allows you to really democratize energy use in the home, but tap into that resource that's already sitting there on four wheels, a really big battery, bigger than most storage systems sold today, and you can tap into that for the first time. And is this something that's going to, like, I, I can see people saying, well, I, I'll plug it in and I'll want my car charged, but I'll, I'll get up in the morning, I'll only have 5% and I won't be able to get to work. Is that kind of a risk? Or is there something that you're doing that makes that not such a risk? Uh, you can actually utilize the system to fix how much you want to utilize for these services for optimization. So if that's just 20% of the battery, if it's 10% of the battery, you know, most of these grid services, especially when it's scaled, they happen with few percent of the battery. And so you're never really utilizing it to drain your battery. It's more like you're using it in the span of time it takes that energy is maybe more expensive, that energy is maybe more costly to generate, that energy might be less clean. You could utilize the battery system and then switch over to a grid system when the energy is more, uh, is more green or renewable, when energy is cheaper for you, and you can decide when to use it. And the system itself is managing all of that in the background. And now, a lot of the people who watch the channel, I think you all know that I drive a Kia Nero EV and Nikki drives uh, Chevy Bolt. Is this something that we can use right now? 
So this system, because the only standard that allows bi-directional charging at the moment is Chatamo, is compatible with the Nissan Leaf and the Mitsubishi Outlander. However, cars that use CCS, like your Kia, like an Audi or a BMW, uh, have it on the roadmap to enable bi-directional charging over the next few years. So this is already defined, and in fact, a couple of automakers have already done pilots with that format. So BMW and Honda have both done pilots in the US using bi-directional technologies using that CCS connector. And with, is this a unit that has to be connected to the grid, or can it be connected to your own solar system and a battery storage system at home? Is that a possibility? Right, so this is designed to be a grid-connected system. Mm -hmm. Its focus is optimizing energy use and also providing services to the grid, where sometimes that grid operator would actually pay you for being able to tap into that resource. In a product update, we're also making the possibility that it works in isolation, and which is not difficult to do. The technology is already within the unit. What you need to worry about there is making sure that it can disconnect from the grid and reconnect in a safe way and be able to match all of your consumption in the home with the right voltage and the right energy to be able to use that function. But that's definitely on the roadmap for, for the product and is part of the vision of bringing this to the public. Thank you very much, that's absolutely fascinating. And just before we go, is this something that's coming to the New Zealand market? Yeah, absolutely. We're targeting to make this available worldwide. We're starting shipping these in Europe just now. We're going to be making them available in the United States before end of the year, and also targeting it to be available in other areas, especially in islands where this is a really cool use case and very relevant. Thank you again. So, why not let us know what you think about this product in the comments below. We really want to hear your thoughts. We know this is going to be a great thing for islands like New Zealand. And why not check out our upcoming videos? They're going to be out soon with more exciting news from CES. Until next time, see you soon.